The name of the game is still anything but Sedevacantism. And judging by recent articles and things, it's the season again for desperately trying to find arguments against Sedevacantism. And that's no doubt because more and more people are becoming Sedevacantists or are seriously looking into the position once they've overcome the initial biases against it or misconceptions about it. Of course, for some people, perhaps, the real hang-up is the name, Sede Vacantism. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Now, some of you listening might not know what it actually means. The term comes from the phrase Sede Vacante. That's Latin and means the chair being empty, and uh, is in reference to the chair of St. Peter, which we believe is vacant. That is, there is no pope, and there has not been one, since Pius XII died in 1958, at least not that we have certain knowledge of. You know, Sedevacanists are simply the Catholics who refused to change their religion after Pius XII died, and their progeny, of course, plus new converts. But that's really all it is. If you want to find one group of people that believes exactly what the Church believed and taught while Pius XII was still Pope, it's Sede Vacanus. No other group that calls itself traditionally Catholic does that. Not the Semitrads. Nope. Not the Society of St. Pius X. Not the Fraternity of St. Peter and other indult groups. Not the New Resistance SSPX. Now, I understand that they mean to, but they don't in actual fact. And since they acknowledge the modernist hierarchs as valid Catholic authorities, but nevertheless refuse their religion, they've had to mess with Catholic doctrine on church authority in order to justify that. You can't have the Catholic hierarchy teaching one thing and the faithful believing another. That's not how authority works in the Catholic Church. And in that case, you might just as well not have a hierarchy at all, because it's worse than useless. It's dangerous and a hindrance to salvation. We said of Arcanists have simply remained what Catholics were up until 1958. We believe no strange new doctrines and we do not refuse submission to anyone we acknowledge as a legitimate Catholic authority. Now it's true that the consequence of that, given what has happened, is that we are basically left bewildered, unable to point to any legitimate shepherds that we know of, but that is what it is. That's just the situation we find ourselves in. And St. Paul says in a second letter to the Corinthians, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And we don't have all the answers, but we don't have to have all the answers. And at least we don't mess around with church teaching to make it fit what we want to see. Because once again, we're Catholics. So then, why don't we just call ourselves that? Why do we call ourselves Sede Vacanus instead? Such a cumbersome and scary sounding word. Well, because unfortunately in our day, the term Catholic is totally ambiguous. Everyone claims to be a Catholic. Everyone, whether it's Richard Rohr or Nancy Pelosi on the left, or Robert Barron and Carl Keating in the center, or Bishop Richard Williamson and Marion Horvat on the right. So to simply say we're Catholic doesn't, I'm afraid, tell you anything anymore. It just doesn't communicate what used to be communicated by that term, so we cannot simply say, well, we're Catholics, even though that is indeed all we are and all we care to be.